Hi everyone, my name is Rodel and I am the creator of Unical. Unical is a database DevOps tools that helps us perform rapid database deployment and repeatable deployment and schema versioning. In this video, I would like to show you how we can uh, uh, perform repeatable deployment for possibly SQL database. PostgreSQL database is uh, one of the most powerful open source relational database and a lot of cloud vendors uh, have actually adopted or fork or PostgreSQL uh, and offer them as a, as a managed service. In fact, Redshift, CockroachDB and, and many others are, are variants of PostgreSQL. So, so it's, it's, always, it's a very exciting uh, technology or platform that, uh, that we very much would like Unical to, to support uh, well enough. Um, in this demo, um, I would like to show you how um, a sample human resource information database, uh, which is version 0 0.2, and, and, and ideally we would like to know how it would came up as version 0 0.2. And in order to answer that question, we should be able to, to have the scheme uh, evolution history available for us. In this particular example, you can imagine back in time you have version 0, which is the baseline version of the database, and initially we only have three tables at the time. We have regions, countries, and location. Uh, and we develop systems out of it, and then over time uh, we realize that a new particular feature of the application needs two tables, such as jobs and departments. So we created jobs and departments table at the time. Uh, in the same way, over time, uh, another requirement or feature requires that we have new tables such as employees and dependents. And uh, we, let's consider hypothetically that this is the latest state of the database today. Um, during development phase, we would like to deploy this database fresh, or maybe during investigation phase, we would like to dis, uh, uh, deploy the database only targeting a specific version such as version 0 01 and not version 0 02. This is a capability that you know, the tools like Unical are able to actually make that possible. Um, with that in mind, uh, let's let's dig uh, deep down into it. So I already have here a sample uh, PostgreSQL. I will consider it as a basic PostgreSQL where we demonstrate some basic features of Unical. Um, we have the files available here, so you can see that we have the organization available. Let's try to look what's inside it. So this time I'm going to use a Visual Studio Code. Um, so um, right here is what we call a, a, a Unical workspace, or a project workspace. There are a couple of reserved directories here that uh, serve specific purpose. Uh, or and, and they are actually executed at at what at a particular time during the migration execution, but in the interest of time, I'd like to show you only the three of this. That's version 0, 0.0. That is our baseline version that I have shown you earlier. This looks familiar, and this is what of course what we call the data definition language. Uh, this is your DDL scripts that set up the database schema and tables. We have regions, countries, and locations here. Um, and then at the same time, when you create these tables, which is generally lookup or master data, we would like to seed that database. So you could also have scripts here called setup data. And you could organize this version in, in many different ways possible. You can create subdirectories or maybe rename them so that they are sequenced better um, and put files in various subdirectories. So you have the freedom to organize the way you want it to be. And this is version zero. Um, and then you have the version one where say over time I need new tables. So I can imagine you have created a new table called version zero one and uh, representing departments and job, which also seeds the data uh, as part of that migration. At the same time, we have version zero two, which contains the other tables, employees and dependents, and the seed data for it. So Let's uh, let's see how it looks. So this time, let's try to deploy the baseline version. So assuming you are at the time where uh, you're just creating the first version of your database. So this time, the uh, but before that, let's 
let's deploy our um, uh, uh, PostgreSQL server. Uh, so this time I'm using Docker to 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 have a PostgreSQL, and I find it very convenient, especially for for demonstration like this where you just create and destroy. But you can you can use any other remote host as well, AWS, uh, RDS, or Azure database for Postgre that that works fine as well. So we have now the Postgres SQL running. It takes some time for Docker to actually make that endpoint available. So meanwhile, uh, let's um, set the environment variable. No, no, not that one. Um, so the environment variable for a Unicode uh, connection string. This time we're saying, okay, when you run uh, Unicode, use this connection string, which actually points to this database on this instance of, uh, of PostgreSQL. So let's set that locally. Okay. Um, let's see, maybe after all it's already available. So let's try to run our migrations now. Let me just clear the screen and maybe put it a little bit higher or bigger. Okay, so what's going on here? So here we say Unical run dash a auto create the database if it's or if it's not yet created. Target only specific version 0.0. .0. This is for PostgreSQL and print some debug information. Okay, that actually uh, uh, that went very well. So now you can see there's a rich information here because the debug diagnostics is is on and that just goes to use that the, the diagnostics is rich enough for you to investigate what's actually going on there is nothing magic in unical everything is just scripts executed safely uh, into your target database and that's the beauty of PostgreSQL because it supports uh, full transactional ddl what does it mean that is an all or nothing situation if one table fail in a batch of scripts in the same sql file then all the rest are, are rolled back. It's the same capability in SQL Server and and, and, and other databases. Uh, so it's, it's it's quite amazing that uh, really capable of this. Not every database is available for that for this feature. Okay. Um, so now we have the migration supplied. So what we're expecting is that we have the version zero applied to our database, and that's what you, we are seeing here. So we have version zero here successfully applied uh, to for 93 milliseconds let's take a look how how i did so this time we're switching to vs code and i have sql tools installed here and i have here a postgresql although that's not the one we need so let's create a new one let's connect to a yeah postgresql and this is like a, say hello unicode that's our connection name. The database is actually the same. Hello, Unico. Username is um, SA. That's what we, we use when we instantiate our Docker container. The password would be what I would generally use everywhere in my example. So nothing really secret about it. Then let's try to test the connection. All right. So we are connected. Means that server is actually up, of course. That's all. Yes. Um, let's inspect it. So now we have here our PostgreSQL database. Let's just remove this so it does not create any confusion. All of this. So just delete that. Yes. And we have the tables here. So we have the countries, locations, and regions, and as well as our version tracking table. Let's see what's inside those tables. So um, let's try to create a new connection here. Okay, that was a bad query because I should have used a filter for that. Let's just skip that and instead just look at one of the tables here. Yeah, so it says select asterisk from location and this is only for version 0. Remember version 0, 01 in our diagram here contains the jobs and departments and we have not targeted that although you can see that the scripts are available there for v01 and v02 now let's take this demo further this time let's try to execute 
all of the migration scripts from uh, from all the way to the latest version. So you say, okay, I want my my I want this database to contain all the changes available, and I want this to be to be the latest version uh, of of my human resource information system database. This time we're saying Unicode run uh, without specifying the target version. So it will just try to identify what's the latest version and apply it safely. Let's try to do that. Okay, so um, everything is, is uh, runs well, there's no error. Let's try to list this again. <clears throat> again, typically you have the Unicode run and the Unicode list to actually show the, um, the what has been applied. <clears throat> cool, so we have the V0 here, V01 and V02. Everything is applied successfully. Let's take a look again at our database because uh, that's, that's where the, the source of truth is. So let's try to take a look here. Yep, so we have here the, um, the version 02, which is actually the departments and, and, um, and the jobs, as well as version 03, which is the uh, employees and dependents. And uh, because we are seeding all of those tables, let's check out the jobs table, for instance, see what's out there. Yes, so it's all been filled up and seeded. Uh, alternatively, in Unicode, you could also see this using um, using CSV files. So it's a pretty cool feature. Sometimes you just you don't want to use scripts, but instead CSV files. So you could use that as well in in Unicode. Uh, but I'm not going to show in this in this demo. So it's cool. So now you have a database and it's up and running. You have run some unit some tests, integration tests on top of this database instance. But then, of course, you do, you want to trust it out. You want to kill it because you want to run another test with a freshly made database. How do we do that? Of course, you can kill this container. That's one way to do it and instantiate a new container. Or alternatively, you could execute a, a Unicode erase. This time, we're saying, okay, um, I would like you to execute the erase script safely on this particular uh, database. Let's try to do that. And as I was saying in the other video, there is nothing really extraordinary in this in this facility. Uh, you as a developer prepare the scripts uh, that that safely enough would drop all those 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 tables that exist, and a Unicode will will encapsulate this in a single transaction uh, execution. So at least when those tables fail, then uh, a rollback mechanism facility will be will be uh, will be executed. And let's take a look again. So what we're expecting now on the database is an empty database. And it's actually, so this time, as I was saying in this demo, let's try to recreate it, right? So because, because she wants something to be recreated from the beginning, this time, again, we're not specifying any target version. We're just saying, just run it, recreate it up to the latest version. And let's do that. And let's do it again. So let's try to list the versions again. This time we're expecting all again to be recreated v01 and v02 now with a different timestamp. Um, and let's take a look again back at the database. What's what's we have here? Um, yeah. So it's yeah. I hope this uh, that you find this facility uh, helpful in, in your development purpose uh, for for desk and development as well as for your database DevOps. Um, I have been testing this using uh, in, in Amazon RDS. That has been my primary integration uh, platform. So it works well out there, um, as well as in, in Azure database and, uh, and some sample databases. So if you're interested in this one, please visit this, um, our GitHub. Um, please uh, appreciate if you could give a star. It goes a long way. Um, and um, you can see here as well some of the available platforms that SQL Server, PostgreSQL, MySQL, MariaDB. Um, we have just implemented some support for Snowflake and Redshift. And I'm trying to work on, on the Synapse as well uh, when we have the uh, sufficient Azure credits to make it work. Um, yeah, and uh, if, uh, if as I was said, I think I, I have not, I forgot to show you how to install Unicode, but if you go to unicode.io and go to documentation, 
Unical is distributed in various channels, so you can use Chocolaty if you have the permissions to do that. Some other companies don't. Uh, you're not allowed to use Choco, or you could, if you're yeah, running using Windows Subsystem Linux or WSL, uh, this would be your, your, your way for now until I have a distribution for, for APT and, and, and YUM, uh, but uh, that's a work in progress. Or you could use .NET tool, um, a global tool for installation. If you have that or the simplest way download the the zip file and map it to the path directory and yeah you can you can you have the unical available for you or download the unical directly and just copy it in your project workspace whereas if you're that developer you could also just embed it in your asp.net core there are samples available here how to do it and if you are doing console apps or background services then you could use the unical.core. So you have two options as a .NET developer. Um, so yes, I hope that you will find this useful in, for anything. Um, just uh, yeah, create an issue here or <laughs> or or ping me. Uh, I will be. I'll make sure that I'll be able to respond to those inquiries. All right. So that's it about this session about repeatable deployment and schema versioning with with Unical. I hope you find this useful. Yeah. Thank you and uh, have a good day.